Welcome to Ultimate Survival Gear. Today, as you guys can see for the very first time on my channel, I have Zamberlin boots for a review. And these are Zamberlin 1996 Vias Lux GTX hiking, backpacking, mountaineering boots. And look at that wow i mean listen when we are talking about when we are talking about the boots we're talking about the ferrari in the <laughs> in the world of boots this is it right here zamberland now i've gotten plenty of requests on this channel to review this and finally here we are now currently 300 Oh my goodness, $360 on Amazon. The link is in the description below. But let me tell you guys right before I even get into the whole review. $360, yes, it's expensive. But once you take it out of the box, once you pick it up and look at it, you start realizing why these are $360. I mean, the build quality is just un freaking believable the quality i never had anything like this on my channel it really is <laughs> phenomenal it truly is a freaking handmade philosophy now i don't know if every boot is made still handmade i would hope so uh, but this is just unbelievable so as some of you know this is not just a regular hiking boot review this review is specifically for my ultimate survival boots section basically if this wasn't just a hiking backpacking boot but if something really bad happened and you were walking in these boots hiking somewhere in the mountains or maybe you were sitting in the house and you had these boots laying around and you put them on you had to leave the house you had to walk for miles to get to the safety on the way to the safety you had to fight you had to climb whatever is necessary to survive right would this be good for your survival how do we make the judgment we make the judgment based on eight different criteria let's begin with the criteria number one comfort level and in order to test the comfort level of all the boots and shoes that i review on this channel i do a three mile run non-stop and then a five mile walk again no pauses in between no no stopping and then I continue wearing the boots for the rest of the day. Total wear time is about eight hours. So overall, these are comfortable. But here are a few things. They're a little bit on the heavier side. Let's start with that. Where's my scale? This is size 10. And the size 10 is... Come on. There you go. Size 10 is... 31... Point two. Now that is, guys, this is really, really heavy. This is probably one of the heaviest boots that I had on this channel. I mean, as heavy as some work boots out there with the steel toe. That's how heavy this is. Now, to give you reference, right, on the weight, if you are looking for something that is lightweight, that is feels that feels lightweight, look for something under 20 ounce. The more under 20 ounce it is, the better it will feel, the lighter it will feel. Uh, I usually say look for around 15, 16 ounce. All right, that is the, the perfect, perfect middle for um, kind of uh, having enough protection, having enough proofing, but at the same time, not going too heavy. The more over 20 ounce you get, the heavier it gets. And this is well over 20 ounce. I mean, this is heavy and bulky on your feet for sure. Running in these, was an absolute freaking torture guys and then walking for for for, for even walking for five minute, miles i mean it was kind of hard because it was after a run um you can walk in this because they are comfortable and we'll talk about the comfort uh but because of the weight i mean you kind of understand right? look at the bulky outsole all right all of this protection here look at this leather i mean there's so much leather in this boot that i mean there's probably more leather in this boot than in leather in a car on the seats i don't know i guess in a ferrari whatever maybe that is leather from ferrari <laughs> and all of the protection of course that we will talk about later so all that adds to the weight and of course that is a huge impact on the comfort level the weight is huge impact on the comfort level but let's talk about the next thing that contributes or takes away from the comfort level the flexibility of the outsole as you can see this right here I mean, this, yeah, good luck bending that with your hands. It's, it's, I mean, it's super stiff. And 
Again, there is a purpose for that. It's more of the mountaineering boot. So in a mountaineering boot, you, you would usually find a stiffer outsole just to give you that hold that just to give you the traction and stability on on the mountain if you're if you're if you're walking up the mountain right uh but on a regular day-to-day -day hiking walking around whatever or ultimate survival uh this is gonna be i mean you will know, good luck bending your knee getting on your knee or really doing it, it's it's really stiff keep that in mind let's move on further we go into the inner sole and i would like to take out the inner sole out of this one if if, if it is possible to take it out uh just to sh show you what it looks like and uh it does not look like the inner sole wants to get out of here but we will force it out <laughs> there we go so uh as you can see the inner sole is uh it's, 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 it's great, it's very nicely shaped. As you can see, the, the, the heel bed is very good, very stiff, very good support. Uh, the, the R support is very good, but it is extremely stiff. The inner sole, I mean, is there is absolutely no cushioning in it. It's just, there's no impact protection at all. And uh, when you remove it, you can, yeah. <laughs> It's like, it's almost like made it out of wood, you know? <laughs> and once you remove it, it goes straight. Well, there is a little bit of jelliness before it goes into that super stiff outsole. So that jelliness kind of helps, it's good, but not much, not much of uh, cushioning at all. Now we also got our uh, padding, not a lot of padding. Again, very stiff. Uh, there is more padding on the tongue in the, in the ankles. There is not much padding at all then going inside of the boot we have that layer kind of going around adding a little bit of the comfort but again not much uh, and that's our uh, as you can see the fabric right there um, so overall on the comfort level I mean you have to really like stiff I mean you have to be that I prefer stiff I don't need no cushioning I don't need no softness on the, I like stiff that's the kind of person you have to be to appreciate these boots. If you are not that type of person, then this is definitely not for you. I mean, I don't want you to spend $360 and be disappointed. This is only for those that like as freaking stiff and heavy as it gets. All right. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Let's move on to the criteria number two. All right. Proofing and protection. Now, this is Gore-Tex. This is GTX waterproofing, and you can see it doing its job uh, on the inside. Uh, I have to compliment Zamberlan here on excellent waterproofing. Excellent job on waterproofing. I mean, this is freaking waterproof. You can walk in this as deep as, and I'll tell you exactly how deep. And now we got the lowest part of the shaft. That's how you measure your waterproofing. Uh, it's more than six inches, probably like six and a half inches. And then you measure the gusseting of the tongue, which is lowest part right here. And it is a good, at least six and a half, maybe even seven inches. So you have at least six inches clearance of waterproofing, meaning that if you walk through the creek that is six, six inches deep, you can have water all the way up here and walk and you're not gonna get wet. So waterproofing in this is phenomenal. Another phenomenal thing in this boot is the protection. Protection is excellent here. You have, I mean, your toe is, <laughs> is as good, if not better, as a composite toe. I mean, you can drop weight on it and it's gonna hold. This is extremely hard. So again, on the rocky road, on, in, in, on the mountain, this is gonna provide more than enough protection for you. Same thing with the rest of the boot. I mean, this is leather. This is a good quality leather and it has, uh, it provides great protection for the rest of your foot as in the ankles, as in throughout the whole thing and the heels. And of course you have this absolutely massive outsole that we will talk about later, which gives you of course the protection from the bottom as well. So proofing and protection wise, these boots are fantastic fantastic let's move on to the criteria number three quality and the design features now zamberland made in italy handcrafted uh, quality is unbelievable the best quality of uh, anything that i reviewed on this channel so far everything is built like i mean like i said this is a ferrari in the world 
of boot, all right? Um, design features, now usually here I talk about little cool things that boot manufacturers sometimes implement. Here there's really not much that anything out of the ordinary. Uh, so we will just talk about the lacing system here. We got um, five pairs of closed hooks and three pairs of open hooks, which is great for the um, outdoors walking. There's a flat strings. Personally, I'm not a fan of flat strings, but these actually work very well. It's easy to put them on and take them off because of the quality of the lacing system of the hardware that is implemented so overall nothing nothing i would say out of the ordinary there let's move on to the criteria number four very important outsole traction stability now whenever i do my run and uh my walk i do it on a variety of different surfaces starting with the uh, older asphalt and then i go into the newer tarmac then i go into the dry sand wet sand uh dry grass wet grass then i go into the rocky road um what else was there trail surface concrete marble tile rubber and then the rock wall forget about the rock wall this is no don't even try okay bad idea <laughs> but everything else this is actually this outsole handles pretty good on pretty much everything else uh good balance of aggression and flatness more towards aggressive side however even though it kind of looks flat uh, but this this I mean it's very very aggressive so you can walk down the hill uh, on a slippery hill and this will catch you very nicely this is what this is designed for this is why these are mountaineering boots um, but for a regular hike for more or less I mean you can uh, regular hike you can freaking walk for 10 miles somewhere I don't know in Virginia and um, this is still gonna be overkill <laughs> all right this is still gonna be overkill so keep that in mind okay unless you're doing some serious mountaineering this is probably gonna be overkill this uh, outsole um, it's really is has one purpose and it is for the most part mountaineering I wish there was some ridges here but this whatever it's not even I'm not even worrying about climbing in this because good luck climbing in this uh, having 30 something ounce on each side of your foot uh, <laughs> let's move on to the criteria number five now temperature now these are even though these are not winter boots you can utilize them as winter boots no problem i mean they have great amount of waterproofing so snow doesn't worry you as long as you implement some insulated socks you will be just fine uh not nothing extreme though okay because there is no insulation here and they're fairly thin i mean leather holds the temperature pretty good but still, if you are looking for something that is, you know, gets pretty cold, uh, you probably want to go with uh, winter boots and something for appropriate for ice because this will be pretty good on the snow. But on ice, just like anything else, except for the ice boots, this will be slippery. Let's move on to the criteria number six really quick. Sizing. These are true to the size. Definitely get half a size bigger for yourself over your normal shoe size like I always do on all of my boots and shoe trail running shoe reviews um, to get yourself a little bit of extra space here in the toe box so that your toe is not touching from the inside the toe box here it is especially important because you have this very very hard protection cap on the front of the toe box very important guys don't ruin it for yourself let's move on to the criteria number seven now the balance of application so if this really were your ultimate survival boots would they be good for your survival or would they get you killed? Here's the thing. It's a great boot. It has a purpose. All right. Uh, the build quality is unbelievable. The features, the waterproofing is great. But are you the type of person that prefers mobility, lightness, versatility from your boots, from your shoes? Or are you the type of person that doesn't care about the running fast, doesn't care about weight on their feet, and they just want as much of protection as possible, as much of proofing as possible, and as better quality that will last them longer as possible, preferably for mountaineering. <laughs> LOL, if you're a second one, this is the booth for you, all right? If you're like me, this is... I mean, this quality, nothing against this boot. It's fantastic. It's amazing. The quality is unbelievable. But it's overkill for 
most of everything, <laughs> all right? So keep that in mind. And the reason why it is overkill is the criteria number eight, of course, the price. Yes, $360, you, it's, it's an investment, all right? You're putting a lot of money. So you better know what you are getting and what are the purposes of this boot. Because if you are just a, a startup hiker and you're like, you know, I have money, money is not really a huge issue for me. I just want something fantastic quality and just take it on regular hikes you're probably not gonna appreciate this because they're heavy, they will slow you down and you will be like, well, this is the best of the best. It's expensive, it's, it's great. Why is it, why I don't feel good hiking? So I don't want you to ruin a hike for yourself. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, just get yourself something you can get something around hundred dollars if not less uh, and enjoy your hike and have fun and still have waterproofing and still have all of these little features uh just of course it's not a quality like this but listen if you're not a mountaineer hiker every day overkill um so is the price fair $360 for a handmade leather Gore-Tex Vibram outsole. I mean, Vibram is a high quality rubber, excellent, excellent outsoles from Vibram. Um, maybe, maybe. Personally, I wouldn't buy it. Uh, I wouldn't buy it for $250 either, just because something else is more attractive to me, something that I can find. If I want a full-size boot, I would probably go with Solomon uh, Quest 4 um, or Solomon Quest Prime, the older version, and I would be happy with it and I can get it for $170, $180. Um, and it would serve me just as fine. Uh, so again, this is really your personal decision. Nothing against these boots, but are they right for your situation? So hopefully this review was useful and I finally answered the question about Zamberlin for some of you guys that requested me to review this boot. Uh, if you have any other requests, drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you found this review useful, please consider joining the membership in my channel. It's only 99 cents a month, it's not a lot. Uh, just 99 cents a month, but this will dramatically help me improve the quality of my videos, bring more content, stuff besides boots, and just keep this channel going. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. This was Ultimate Survival Gear, and I'll see you guys in the next video.